G'day everyone, it's Chris Carlin here and this week's Whiteboard Wednesday, I'm excited to have Emily Wallace, former primary school teacher turned buyer's advocate and we've discussed a few great tips on why you should, need, should have a buyer's advocate, what a buyer's advocate actually does and what are some of the best tips that you can have in order to purchase your first home. If you're someone who's struggling to find a place for your first home, then this is a Whiteboard Wednesday that you don't want to miss. Thank you very much for joining us, Emily, on Whiteboard Wednesday. No worries, thank you for having me. Fantastic, so uh, why don't you start off, just tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, what, uh, what you do. Sure, so I'm a buyer's advocate, also known as a buyer's agent, but I chose the title advocate because sometimes people get confused with a real estate agent. Sure. Yep. So I essentially advocate for the buyer only mm -hmm. in the property um, transaction. So I represent them through, through the whole process, um, mm -hmm. auction bid, negotiate, uh, and act as their advocate so that Wonderful. they have someone on their side. Wonderful stuff, excellent. And who would be someone that would use your services? Because I think of a buyer's advocate, I think, you know, $2 million mansions and Turak or something like that. Who's your, who's your ideal client? Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I think thanks to the block, people have an impression that advocates are only for the very wealthy and for large purchases, yep. which is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an idea, my average purchase, purchase price sits at around 800000 So it's okay. not... Yep. It's not astronomical. Um, it's for those who are time poor, mm. those who don't necessarily transact in the market themselves very often, mm. particularly first home buyers. They've never done it yeah. before. Mm. Um, I do have a soft spot for teachers, also nurses, but teachers yeah. because I am a trained primary school teacher oh, and I understand that mm. uh, teachers do not have a lot of time. Even though they get holidays, I know that they're planning for their next term and they don't get a lot of time. So yeah. people who are time poor. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. So, and you're based in the Melbourne area, aren't you? Correct. Yeah, yeah. offices yeah. in St Kilda and I operate in the Bayside and South East suburbs for purchasing. Fantastic stuff. Where an 800 grand purchase is quite normal. And um, yeah, yes. no, that makes <laughs> sense. So, um, and so if for those um, who are outside of your uh, demographic, say we've got science in Sydney or Brisbane, and they're looking for someone to act on their behalf, um, yep. who, what, what, what do you need to look for in, for, a, for a buyer's advocate? So I think the biggest piece is looking for some similar, like the purchases that they've just made. So if you're doing some inquiry and research online, I'd be asking the advocate, you know, just, could you just highlight your last three purchases for me to see if they understand what you're after and if they transact in that sort of market. Yep. Um, but also, obviously, um, social media these days is pretty transparent. Mm use um, and even having a chance to call one of their most recent clients and ask for some feedback on what they enjoyed about the service and what they found. Yep. I think um, there's no one stop website to be able to articulate you know, who the best advocate is. Mm. It's very much about personal fit because you're going to spend a lot of time with that advocate, yes. potentially three to six months. Yep. You want to make sure you're on the same level personality wise as well. Fantastic stuff, fantastic. And what's your number one uh, golden tip for uh, those who are looking to buy, particularly their first home? Okay, so emotion often gets in the way, um, big time. So find a way to withdraw emotion, whether that be if, you, if you're um, not going down the route of an advocate, that's okay. Get a non-emotional friend, not a family member, or someone who's very good at clear-cut things yes. um, to make sure they're helping you in seeing things that you might not otherwise see when you're inspecting a home. Definitely, definitely. Those those cracks on the walls or something in the building report or something like that, um, getting that team around you is uh, getting the right advice is definitely huge, isn't it? Correct. Fantastic. Yeah, no, definitely not. And it is an expensive mistake and a very emotional time. So uh, that's fantastic stuff. Well, we've got listeners who are in the uh, Bayside area um, and want to reach out to you. Where can we find you, Emily? Certainly. So I'm very active on LinkedIn. You can find me, Emily Wallace. Also Instagram, um, Emily Wallace BA, or just head to my website. Type in Emily Wallace Buyers Advocate and I'm sure I'll pop up in Google. <laughs> fantastic. And you're also on a podcast as well. I am on a podcast. Yeah, yes, yeah. we have a podcast, which for the teachers who are listening, it's called I Wish I Was Taught That at School. So, oh, yes. um, yeah, it's all the topics that, I mean, I thought that, that people should have been taught in school as well as my business partner too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 
check it out if you want some um, commutable size listening. Thanks for checking out this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure you share it with your friends, family, work colleagues, or someone that's gonna benefit from the content of this video. And also leave your comments below or up top or wherever the comments section may be. Uh, you know, I wanna hear your feedback. What did you enjoy about it? Did you agree with it? Did you disagree with it? Hey, just let me know your thoughts. Always appreciate your feedback. And if this is something you wanna discuss in a bit more detail, make sure you head over to masteryourmoneynow.com.au forward slash get started and book in your complimentary 30 minute money strategy session with myself or one of my team members where you can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion about your situation and how you can build wealth for yourself, build wealth for your family and build wealth for your community or your world around you. Hope you have a fantastic week. Looking forward to seeing you next week's Whiteboard Wednesday.